And we're live recording video. This is the interview with Derek Ivory on WERA 96.7 and on DC Music Rocks. Yep. So, Derek, say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. The um, track is done in about 30 seconds. So hang out for just 30 seconds. I'm listening to me. And we're all gonna get to know each other. I love these videos. It's fun to have them on video and not just audio. I like this song. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. Yeah. Cha cha cha. Mm -hmm. And that was Derek Ivory and his track, Up to You. And Derek, tell us about that track. Um, that was a song uh, that I wrote uh, on, kind of on the road, half on the road, half in my head. Um, I, I remember I was on tour uh, with uh, with my drummer Ben at the time, and we uh, we were standing in, in this club in North Carolina called the Cave. Uh, and it was, it was it's hilarious because I'm about six three, and this the I think the ceiling clearance was about six four. Um, so I just <laughs> I was just like extra like nervous the whole time, super like lurchy and slouchy. Um, but I was, I was like sound checking with my guitar and started playing this riff that I'd been messing around, and it was that kind of intro thing uh, with that little key change she bit, and it just kind of developed, and it's it's uh, you know it's a catchy little little ditty. It is. I've been I've been listening every week when I prepare for these shows. I listen to the tracks, and I've been listening to that one as we were sitting here. I was humming the words because or singing the words, should I say? Because I've mm -hmm. been listening, jamming to it all week. So I appreciate you bringing that one. Sure. And I'm really excited, listeners. I've also I'm taking video of this thing. So if you check in later on YouTube and on Facebook, I'm going to post the video of this interview so you can meet Derek live in person. Uh, or, well, by video, I guess, not live in person. But you should come to a show and meet him live by person because in person he's pretty awesome freaking dude and I'm excited to have you here. And now I'm excited to, let's take that part where we share about you. Let's get to know you. Let's talk so, about me. Yeah. Let's, so first, tell us your story, man. How did you get your start? How did you become Derek Avery the musician? Um, with a lot of help and patience. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a succinct answer. Tell yeah, us more. You know what I'm <laughs> I, uh, I, I've kind of always been musically inclined, musically interested. Uh, I'll go as far as to say musically talented. Uh, very, very, very early age. Um, my parents started me uh, with uh, with voice lessons. I was always singing and I was classically trained um, with, with a professional opera singer and then actually went on and did some opera uh, performances after that um, when I was very, very young. Uh, and kind of got out of that uh, around puberty, voice was changing, and just started getting into doing more pop rock kind of stuff. I, I never really uh, listened to classical or opera, um, but always kind of had that concentration. And uh, I, I think a, a lot of a lot of that um, discipline kind of helps keep me grounded and and not not just you know going off otherwise I would just be in a, in a band that basically sounds like if Blink-182 and the Deftones had a baby um, <laughs> but uh, but, okay. I, but I know I know a lot more things than uh, than that band could do uh, so I, I like to try to apply some of that theory knowledge and some of that background into what I do how, how does that manifest itself you say so classically trained and opera background but then you're doing this awesome poppy rock sort of I mean you like what you thing. like you know what I mean yeah I, 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 I think having having an understanding of where the music you love comes from and and loving music that that is influenced by that is is part of you know it's the give-and-take I, I'm not going to kind of, you know, pigeonhole my listening tastes to just one style uh, or one thing or, you know, I, I never I never have been into that. I always listen to a lot of eclectic stuff and sometimes I hate bands that I love. You know what I mean? Like, I'll, I'll, <laughs> oh, that I'll, happens to me all the time, too. Yeah, I'll, I'll go, I'll love go on like a, like a system of a down kick and then like two weeks into the, like, I'll be listening to all the records and I'll just be like, I, I'm, I can't take this band seriously anymore and I stop and I have to move on to something else and you know, and then I get tired of listening to Saves the Day, and then I get tired of listening to the Get Up Kids, and then I move on to another thing, and it just kind of, yeah. I just, I, I, I hop, I, what, li lily pad hop, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> Does, I think most people do, eventually you listen, and then you get tired, and things change, and you find new stuff, and sure. it's 
part of the beauty of music. I, I'm really curious when you're saying this, is there anything from that classical background that you're really thankful for? Like, I, I'm really thankful I, I was in sales as my first career before I'm, I now have my day job that's for the government, so totally different set of skills, but I appreciate the sales skills. I'm curious mm -hmm. about for you, is there anything from the classical training that you're really yeah. thankful for now doing this music now? Oh, God, yes. Uh, my, I, I, I don't think I would be able to sing nearly as cohesively as I do without that training. I, I have a, a much larger lung capacity than I ever would. My range is significantly wider than it ever could be um, without that, that foundation. Uh, wow. Absolutely. Uh, and I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I don't, I definitely don't write for my voice. I'm starting to now. Uh, I'm, I'm in the process of recording some new stuff and trying, trying out some, some more melodic phrasing and stretching my vocal legs a little bit. Um, but I, I, I tend to not write for my voice. I write for the style and, you know, the kind of music that I play doesn't require a lot of technique or, yeah. uh, you know. And where where are you playing these days? Is it a lot of recording? Is it shows? Is it you know, more, what what is it for you now? It kind of it varies right now. It's just sort of uh, I'm just playing. I'm trying to play as much as possible. I'm I'm in two or three projects uh, with a bunch of friends. I um, one of which is Metro Songs uh, with Jason Mendelson and a whole bunch of really great people. Um, one of which is called Illuminati, which is kind of an experimental uh, electronic uh, instrumental band that I, you know, hmm. experiment with. Yeah. Uh, I'm doing my own stuff. I'm doing, like I said, I'm working on a new uh, EP right now with uh, with Sean Russell at Q, and um, hmm. you know, I'm, I'm playing. I'm just trying to play as much as possible. On days that I don't have gigs or shows, I'm either working on my own stuff or working on other people's stuff. Uh, whether that's yeah. learning covers for a band or uh, listening to st something from an artist I'm working with, uh, something occasionally I do produce uh, people that I'm into, and uh, that's a thing. Right now I'm working with uh, Tyler Plazio from Soldiers of Suburbia and uh, Kathy DeToro um, from Party Like It's and The Leg Warmers. Uh, wow. And uh, yeah, man, I'm just doing. I'm playing and using, using my hands and using my brain. Every it day. sounds like, from the way you're talking, it sounds like, the, and you do this full time, right? This mm -hmm. is your thing. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Was that a leap? When did you start that? Uh, unofficially, 2009 or 10. Uh, I would say maybe 2011 ish, but uh, effectively May of 2015, I would say. I so. severed ties with, with every, every monetary. Uh, income that that wasn't like directly resulted from you know my music wow. or other music that I perform. That's incredible. It's so, cool. And, and all right, so you took the leap, and it. I mean, you. The music sounds great, and it sounds like you got a lot of exciting things going on. What? Where does it go from here? What's the What's the future look like well, for you the, in your dream world? In tell my us dream the, world. Yeah, no, tell us the dream. My dream is, I, I, I love performing. I'm, I am a performing artist uh, before I'm a recording artist, uh, hands down. Um, and I love performing all kinds of different stuff. And I, I like, I like the, 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 the privilege of being able to indulge in a lot of uh, musical fantasy, uh, performing in like tribute bands and doing tribute shows that happen occasionally. We just did one with, uh, with a, a Saves the Day record that I love um, a couple weeks ago, or actually last week. Um, over at IOTA and you know we it's just me and you know Nicole Morris and Ryan Paladino and Nathan Reed and they play in all kinds of bands and we we don't normally hang out and get together and do stuff but we hung out and got together and did this Saves the Day record and it's a blast man it's that's, just music that's awesome um do, yeah sorry do you it's, well so then it's it's more of more of that it's doing your own thing indefinitely for the future is yeah that... man. i mean i i really got i got a taste of of what it's like to kind of branch out a little bit um at, at the beginning of the summer uh, i opened up for my friend matt tarka um he just put out a record and he was doing an ep release and i decided to do something special he was like you can do it acoustic or you can do it with a band and i was just like i want to do both and i did an acoustic show uh, and i got um, my friend uh, Kate and my friend Alyssa to play uh, cello and violin respectively and 
uh, my friend Patrick on drums and Kevin D'Souza on bass, and we all just played a bunch of tunes, and we did one REM cover, and I kind of awesome. messed it up a little bit uh, <laughs> to make it more fun, and uh -huh. we did it. We did it. Uh, we did "Losing My Religion" in in the key of B major, which is cute. Uh, wow. I'll, have okay. to tell you about that later. Yeah, well, that's, um, a, that's a cool story. But, uh, but yeah, man, and, and you know, just adding added like an element to the music that I I feel like has been missing somewhat. Um, just like that that raw organic like just wooden steel, man. Yeah, um, natural stuff. It was it yeah. was cool. It was a really cool show. So like that's maybe cool. maybe more in that vein, maybe a little more symphonic, maybe a little more theatrical. Um, mm -hmm. On the other hand, I, I just spent two days in the studio and we cut a pretty intense rock record, you know? Like, it's awesome. it's pretty cool, so. And when's that one do? When are you thinking about releasing that one? Um, at this rate, I'm looking at probably uh, dropping a single before Christmas and okay. um, putting out the EP sometime in uh, like late winter, early spring the next year. Awesome. So. Okay, cool, so more exciting things coming from you. Yeah. As you look back on this, this uh, ride that you've been on here, what's like proudest or coolest moments? What what comes to mind? <laughs> oh man, proudest! I, I uh, there's so many. Uh, the, the, you're, 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 wow! Thanks for this amazing question. I'm trying to do this thing where this is this is live radio, and I feel like dead air is a bad thing in live radio. So you don't want to have that like, hey, here's a question uh, thing. But you're you're asking me to 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 flip through Polaroids of thousands of instances and pick one, like... Yeah, uh, that's exactly. <laughs> if you want to think about it for a second and come back to that one, that's cool too, because the other question I want to put you on the spot with is the one that I ask everybody, and I love this one, which is I, one piece of advice you would offer for DC musicians and one piece of advice you'd offer for DC music fans. Those are I, I love hearing that from the people who have been through the okay. in this in this booth with me. We've had some amazing guests, and I and some more coming. And I'm going to ask everybody that question because okay. I love hearing the thoughts. Okay. So sh share that with us. Um. All right. Piece of advice that I would give to DC music fans mm -hmm. most definitely is uh, do do a little bit of of backlog digging. Like go. Look! Look at look at the bands that are happening now. Look at the bands that used to happen, and try to try to connect the dots and find some gaps that are missing. Um, I'll I'll give you a really good example a little bit later on. Uh, I think uh, if we if we can get to some of that stuff, but uh, yeah, there's there's a there's a lot of really amazing music that has happened and that is currently happening, and. I'm not going to name names right now just because I don't want to single out anyone, but just like sure. find your genre, find your band, and find who they played with. And you'll find nice. some amazing music that you will have never known existed. I can I can name 50 right now off the top of my head and I don't I don't like I said I don't want to single anyone out. I'll just give you one quick, yeah. quick example. There's sure. this band um, that I know a lot of people uh, may or may not remember. Um, this, this, this dude Vince that we all know uh, is in this band called Army of Me, and Army of Me was doing some pretty cool stuff. Um, you know, when I was in high school, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and they were like kind of on top as far as I was concerned. You know, and they were playing with uh, bands like Pat McGee Band, and I I I never really understood why those two bands were playing together because they didn't sound anything like each other. Um, of course, it doesn't matter, but. Right. Uh, at the time, I was very confused because I was, you know, t 13, 15, and, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, but they also used to play with um, this other band called Bicycle Thieves, and uh, I never would have found out about one without the other. Um, there's so many shows that, I, that I've gone to where, like, I see a national touring act, and then I catch the opener, and the local opener or the DC opener, depending on where you are, uh, it blows me away, and then I'll go see them and see bands that they play with and they're friends with, and they're all killer, and then, then I That's... just find this whole other just sub scene of, it's almost a subculture, and every band has their little clique, their crew, their yeah. their other bands that they roll with, hopefully, unless they're just the yeah. worst people, <laughs> in which case 
they're probably making really great music. Check that out. Right. <laughs> you know? but, probably so. Uh, some of the best musicians are just the worst humans. But, uh, but for not, the most and part. And I'm not excluded in that. But all... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, come on now. Okay, fine. Right. I'm not the worst human. All right. But, um, we'll cut you some slack just because you. you're here. Thank you for the human slack. Um, uh, but I would, say, I would say the advice for DC music fans is to find bands that your favorite band toured with or played with and, uh -huh. and see see what they were about see what they were into or see what they are about and see what they are into check out the openers check out yeah. you know don't just go see the headliner go see the whole show if the show starts if doors are at 7.30 get there at 7.30 right see the 8 o'clock uh -huh. band you know what I'm saying that's my advice um, and advice to, to DC musicians you live in a transient area every five years you have t t three to ten thousand different people that will not have heard of you and will not have known anything that you have done in the past, keep playing your music. Yeah. Don't quit because nice. the, fi the 500 people that you used to play with have all moved away because they all have government jobs or other things or they get involved in whatever and like you don't have a fan base anymore. Like I've seen a lot of migrating fan bases and a lot of, uh, a lot of just transient audiences and it, it, it's, it's going to be okay. There's always more people. Just sometimes there isn't. And don't forget, when you started, there wasn't. <laughs> yeah, that makes um, sense. That's my advice. And, <laughs> and Derek, I, I want to, I, you also, one of the challenges that I give to, well, two things. One, I want to say that, uh, and what you're talking about, finding uh, the, the bands that you like and then bands like them. Mm -hmm. One of the things I'm really excited about with DC Music Rocks is I've actually, on the website, you can go to Browse by Genre and you'll see, if you like rock music, sure. you'll see the artist and then you'll see all the other rock artists. And art, if you also like, the, I've, I've tried to make it very easy to find some of those on the web as well. So if you're doing that, that approach, which I love, go to their websites or you can find them and then you can find their peers and then you can uh, check the bands that they've played with. And I kind of, I'm helping to put it all in a place so you can find it. So I want to I want to share that with the listeners. Uh, check out dcmusicrocks.com, the Fine Browse Music Tool. I'm really proud of that one. And the other thing I want to do is we got to jump into the music because you brought some amazing music with you. Every guest Heck that yeah. comes on the show, I always have them bring a, a bring music with them so that we can share it with everybody. And Derek brought some awesome tracks. So first up, you brought up that band Classified or Classified Frequency. I don't mm -hmm. know if you brought them up, but t uh, this is t what's this what's this track you got for us? Uh, this is this is my my good friend Matt Berry. Uh, his band is called Classified Frequency. Matt actually played bass on that song "Up to You." Um, wow! That you oh, cool! All right. Writer. So mm -hmm. I was kind of mentioned that. So I would have. Thank you for bringing that up. But this is Matt's thing. This is what Matt does. It's loud. It's called Classified Frequency, and the song is called "Reach Out." Rock it, dude. Guys, you're awesome. Thanks for tuning in. Derek Every, everybody, thank you very much, Derek. Derek. <laughs>